Hey everybody, I thought I would talk about Unity best practices. I find that a lot of devs are trying to bend Unity to their programming will, and uh, that's not going to work out so great. Unity does things in a very specific way, and you'll get more done if you also do things in a very specific way. So today I'm going to teach you how to actually use monobehaviors, the architecture of monobehaviors. Uh, it's not as complicated as it sounds, it's pretty straightforward. Basically, we're creating a modular approach. Uh, sometimes I call it a mix-in approach. And uh, it allows you a lot more flexibility with a lot less effort. Let's go ahead and talk about an example. You're programming a game. You program the hero class, the monster class, the inventory class, the health potion class. Well, about that health potion. What is it? Is it like descending from the potion class, which descends from the edible class, which descends from the inventory object class? That's a lot of chains there. That's a lot of links that you're going to have to maintain if anything ever changes. Plus, health restoration is pretty basic, so what if you want to use it as a spell, or on a monster, or as part of an enchanted object? Are you seriously going to write a different class for every single one of those? Because you're going to have to maintain all that code if anything ever changes. What if you want a potion that's got three different effects? It's really fragile. You have to do a lot of work to keep that running. What's the alternative? Well, the alternative is to do the proper modular approach. Everyone that does Unity uses, uses this approach, whether they mean to or not, because Unity uses it. Uh, it's very, very basic, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and teach it to you right now. Um, just so you know, Kerbal uses this exact same tech. It's not in any way uh, limited to small games or anything like that. This is absolutely normal. Here I've got a rocket engine and a light. How do I represent these in my game? What does my rocket engine class descend from? Does it descend from ship component? Well, let's take a look. Here is my rocket engine. And you can see that I've got a couple of classes up here. These are mono behaviors that are core to Unity. Did you ever wonder why Mesh Renderer and Mesh Filter are separate? Isn't that kind of awkward? Because Mesh Renderer always has a Mesh Filter, right? Well, the truth is there's a lot of different ways you can render a lot of different kinds of meshes. And Unity decided to split them apart so that you could kind of mix and match and there wouldn't be quite so much in the way of shared code that needed to be refactored continuously. So instead of having like a skinned mesh renderer of skinned mesh, and then a skinned mesh renderer of non-skinned mesh and stuff like that, Unity goes ahead and just plays it fast and loose. You throw the mono behaviors onto the object and it works it out. And that's the approach we're taking. The core idea here is you throw crap onto the object. You don't descend you don't do anything complicated or hard-coded, you just throw crap onto the object. Right, so here's my ship component class, and here's my rocket engine. Does my rocket engine descend from ship component? No! Of course not, we're not descending. The rocket engine is just its own thing, and the ship component is also its own thing. They're just on the same object. Now, there is some relation. The rocket engine will check and see, and if the ship component exists, and says that it's busted, the rocket engine will say, oh, I guess I'm busted. But I could put the rocket engine on anything. I could put it on someone's shoes. I could put it on a sun. There's no penalties. And if I decide that there are other kinds of component, for example, ground-based component, space-based component, biological life form component, I don't have to worry about re-implementing the mix-in engine or any of the other mix-ins because they are already there and they just get plugged in just fine. How about if I want to do more complicated things? What if I want this engine to also generate radioactive psychic goo? Well, I just drop a mix in resource on it and type in radioactive psychic goo. There we go. Now it generates radioactive psychic goo. And because the mix in resource and the mix in engine are their own thing, rather than being descended from ship component, I can do that. If they were both descended from ship component, I could only use one of them, which would be a tremendous pain in the butt. Actually, if we look into it, I have another mix-in component down here. It's not even on the same object. Ah, just put it wherever I want. It works. It all works. It's great. This is the approach you should be taking. So what about that health potion? 
Well, you would have on your health potion object the same basic setup I have here on my light object. So we've got our ship component. That would be your inventory object if you were making a potion. Just tells you what sort of thing it is for what sort of container. And then uh, down here you would have your consumables. In my case, it's a breakable uh, because when you're on a spaceship, you just break stuff rather than eat it. But it's the same idea. So when the player is uh, doing their thing and clicks on the object, the object knows that it can be clicked on because it has a, uh, a, a consumable. And when, uh, when the player clicks on it, it runs its consumable function. Now you might be thinking, okay, well now I have to program that consumable function. So that means I've got to have like a consumable function target on my consumable function. Maybe it's got to search for all you know, game action uh, thingies. Uh, ooh, it's getting complicated, right? No, no, you're overthinking it. Just put in a Unity event. Here's my Unity event right here. So whenever the light gets toggled, this Unity event fires. And all it does is I've wired it up right here in the inspector, zero code. I've wired it up to turn the light on and off. I can show it to you. Ooh, boop, ah, and I could make it do anything. Here, I'll make it blow up the rocket thruster. And of course I can make multiple uh, things it can do. So uh, ship component, debug, break everything. And then um, I'm also going to make it just make itself disappear entirely. Game object, set active, false. Right, so... Now what happens when I tell it to break? Oh my gosh, the engine broke and it exploded. Ah! And in case you missed that, the engine turned a different color when it broke because that's what it's programmed to do when it breaks. So that is the basic idea of mix-ins. Oh, or rather, sorry, basic idea of mono behaviors. Um, you do these modular approaches and it works. It, you just let it work and it will do all of the work for you. You just have to think about how you're gonna set it up. So if you've got your potion, you've got your health restore effect, and you just wire it up so that when your potion gets drunk, the mono behavior, sorry, the uh, unity event is pointed at that health restore, and then the health restore just runs. And if you have another thing there, like a mono restore or a level fade, or I don't know, grow by twice the size, you just wire them up in the same way. Now you can have the potion just do a search for everything that could be triggered by it, uh, but that's often not the best way to do it. With this approach, you can get a lot more complexity out of it very flexibly. For example, you could have a logic gate. When someone who's level one through five drinks this potion, it does 12 points of damage, but if someone's six or above, it heals 12 points, right? And all you have to do is have another object, another mono behavior, which has that distinction in it and uh, fires off another unity event <laughs> that goes every direction you want it to go. This kind of approach is uh, not bad at all. It allows unity to do things that are very flexible and very easy for you to create. Too many people try and code it all in. Too many people try and hard code all this crap, but really you should rely on Unity's mono behavior approach, Unity's modular approach, because that's what Unity is good at. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them below.